What's going on y'all? Welcome to another Quick Tip Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking about eight items that you need to have to ensure your success in not only catching a lot of speckled trout, but catching big speckled trout. But before we get into that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button to see all of our future content, as well as heading over and checking out our Patreon page, where we got all kinds of insider information on things that's happening around the Mobile Bay area, uh, as well as surrounding areas. But without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and dive into it. All right, diving into it. We're gonna start off with talking about the backbone to trout fishing, and that is gonna be your setup. Now I'm gonna go over the setup that I prefer, um, but if y'all want a more in-depth video on trout setups, go ahead and visit this video right here where I got Captain Josh Lim breaking down the setups that he uses. But I prefer a six foot nine medium light fast action rod okay now this one here is actually a 6.6 but i like my rods to be in that range at 6.6 to 6.9 uh, i just feel like i have more control over my rod tip which is super important if you stretch yourself out and you go with a seven foot in and i wouldn't even say seven foot's okay but seven three seven six you're getting longer right and when you're going to your medium lights and your fast, moderate, fast action tips, you start to get a lot of play in that rod. And you want a rod that's going to continue, or that's, you want a rod that's going to apply steady pressure throughout the fight of that fish. And the problem with having a 7376 on a, on a fast action rod, medium light, is that it's, it's flimsy. So when you've got a trout that's got a lot of head shakes, it's coming up, it's dark and it's moving around that rod is 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 springing right and that's a bad thing because what's going to happen is that trout's going to come up shake his head that rod's going to fling that hook loose right so you want a rod that's going to continue to apply steady pressure throughout the fight and i feel like it's perfect with a 6669 medium light fast action rod if there was one rod set up that i could have over anything else for trout fishing, that would be the one. Um, going into the reels, all right, if you're using baitcaster, 100 size reels uh, to, to 50, you know, my auto bearing that y'all have seen me use a lot of times is a 50 size, which is pretty small, has a very small spool, but I don't need a big spool, right? Uh, if you're using a spinning reel, you can go with a, uh, a 2500. I wouldn't really go any bigger than that. That's all you need. Um, if it's a dedicated trout setup, 2,500 on your spinning reel, 100 to 50 on your bait casters, and you'll be good to go. All right, the next thing about trout fishing, okay, is, is going to be your lines, right? Uh, a lot of times I see people go out there and they're throwing 20 pound tests, 30 pound tests sometimes, and it's just way overkill, right? The heavier your line, the more drag that that line has on your lure, the less natural it looks, and, and you know your current starts to lose its effect on that lure. You want to go with, with light line, and in particular, you want to go with braid. And when we're talking about braid, I go with Suffix 832, which is an eight strand braid, 10 pound test. That's all you need. Okay, the biggest trout that I've caught have all been on 10 pound test because the smaller my line is, the less drag that that line has against my lure in the water, which means that the current is gonna have a more natural effect on that lure. But more so than that, I'm A, I'm able to fit a little bit more line on my spool, but B, it, it's lighter line is giving me a further cast, it's giving me less friction on my guides, right? And when you're trout fishing, one of the most important things that you need is a good long cast, because you want to get that lure as far away from your boat or kite as possible. Um, and 10 pound suffix 832 does that for me. All right, next thing you need is fluorocarbon leader to attach to your braid, okay? So the knot that I use is a uni to uni knot when I'm attaching, I'll go ahead and post that knot here. Um, but when I'm talking about fluorocarbon leader, I wanna use 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, not 20, not 25, 10 to 15, okay? I prefer 10 and if you notice, I'm holding 30 because it's what I had. But 
when I'm trout fishing, I'm using 10 pound fluorocarbon leader 99% of the time, okay? <clears throat> All right, so now that we've talked about the rod, the reel, the lines, right? We're gonna talk about the lures, okay? Now, if I were to have just a few lures to keep on my boat, these are gonna be the lures that I would have. <clears throat> okay, we gotta have something that has a little bit of finesse, all right? So, y'all seen me throw them. Uh, I got one tied on right here. It's gonna be none other than the Z-Man Jerk Sheds, all right? This is my go-to finesse lure. Um, you know, I used to throw a lot of Berkeley Gulp and and Berkeley Gulp jerk sheds work very, very well, but these work just as well. The biggest trout that I've caught this year, um, a 28 and a half and a 31 inch trout have been on the Z-Man jerk sheds, okay? So I'm gonna have something with some finesse. All right, now, I'm gonna use this in my cleaner water uh, areas or, or sometimes when your fight your your bites hard to come by You know you want something that's a little more subtle, right? Not not too aggressive in the water All right, go with a z-man jerk shed. You won't be disappointed Now when my water's a little bit muddier or I'm in low light conditions or the fish are, are really really aggressive Okay, then I need to swap to a good paddle tail all right, my paddle tail of choice is none other than the Egret wedge tail mullet. And if we're talking colors, there's not a better color than glow chartreuse. Chartreuse? Chartreuse. All right, that's my paddle tail of choice. These are the only two soft plastics that I need on my boat, period. Okay, I don't need anything else, right? If, if the bike's subtle, I'm going with the jerk sheds. If the bike's aggressive, I'm going with the Egret wedge tail mullet, all right? I don't need anything other than those two soft plastics. Now, to tie that together, okay, not all jig heads are created equal, all right? Now, I prefer the eye strike trout eyes jig heads, okay? Now, if you notice this jig head, this is a short shank jig head, okay? This is for my three and a half inch paddle tail, all right? Eighth ounce, now we're talking weights, Eighth ounce quarter is all you need. You don't need three eighths ounce jig heads for trout fishing, period. I don't ever throw a three eighths ounce jig head for trout fishing. It's either gonna be an eighth ounce, a quarter, and sometimes a sixteenth. But we got eighth ounce jig heads. This is a short shank jig head. This is for my egret wedge tail uh, mullet because it's a three and a half inch bait. If I used a long shank jig head like that one right there, my hook's going to almost be in the back of that wedge tail. And not only does it look goofy, but the longer that that hook runs through the body of that bait, the, my tail's not, not thumping anymore because I got a hook that's creating that spine, right? And it's shortening the, the, the play and that lure. So making sure that you have a set of long shank jig heads for your jerk sheds right there, okay? and having short shank jig heads for your shorter baits like your egret wedge tail mullets. Short shank jig heads. Now, last but not least, I think I've covered just about everything, right? Last but not least, to go trout fishing, you can't leave the house without a top water, all right? Now, my top water of choice, I have two, okay? I have the Mirror Lure Sheet Dog that I really like, and then I also have the Heaton One Knocker. The Heaton One Knocker is, I mean, it's, in, in my opinion, it's far superior to any top water there is for trout fishing because of the pitch. I don't know what it is, but the data doesn't lie. If y'all follow the speckled truth, and if you don't, you should, uh, but if y'all follow Speckle Truth, the data shows that that Heaton One Knocker is the most popular topwater for catching trout over 27 inches. I believe that to be correct. If Chris Bushes happens to stumble across this video, uh, let me know, comment, and tell me if I'm right or not. But I do believe I read somewhere that that One Knocker is far superior to anything else uh, topwater, and it's got everything to do with the pitch. 
all right if you're using top waters that have a lot of little rattles in it right it sounds to me it sounds too scattered it sounds way too aggressive but when you got that one bead that's knocking that weight around doom, doom, helping that that lure walk a lot smoother and just thumping and making that clicking noise as it's walking like the heat and one knocker far superior all right y'all so those are the eight must-have items for trout fishing for catching big trout lots of trout um i don't know it was probably more than eight things i felt like i counted it before the video so we're gonna call it eight but yeah that's all i use y'all that's it that, and that's all you need uh to get out there and catch trout so if y'all want to see all the products i don't think i mentioned this earlier but i'm gonna put all the product links down in the description so y'all can check out those products there but yeah that's it uh i hope y'all liked the video if you did hit that like button comment with any questions subscribe if you haven't already we'll see y'all next time